All right, welcome back folks and thank you for joining. Today we're going to talk about Amazon Web Services Relational Database Services, the RDS service, uh, in particular about backup and failover solutions. We're going to do a high-level introduction to the following topics. RDS automated backups, multiple availability zone deployments, and read replicas. So let's start. With RDS backups, we get two options. We get the automated backup option and the manual database snapshot option. Each backup option is a little bit different and we're gonna compare it right here. <clears throat> the automated backups um, is a full daily snapshot combined with transactional logs that are backed up to S3 file storage. This particular backup method allows us to do a point in time restore up to the second. In this diagram below here, you can imagine if you imagine this is a timeline and that we're taking daily snapshots here and here and in between the snapshots, we are backing up transactional logs on the second. Um, we can basically with a date picker choose the point in time that we want to restore to. So this is a very powerful feature within automated backups. The transactional log backup to S3 combined with the full daily snapshot. This is different than the manual database snapshot that is only on a given um, uh, interval that the user selects. The automated backups gives us a retention period of 1 to 35 days, um, the default being 7 days. You can also define your preferred backup window, a scheduled maintenance window, um, some off time maybe, right? some off hours, uh, not a time of peak. That's the automated backups. In the database snapshots, the manual uh, user-initiated snapshots, um, the main differences are that um, snapshots persist even if the RDS instance is deleted. So if in the case of automated backups, when you delete that instance, all of the automated backups get deleted with that instance deletion. With manual database snapshots, when you initiate a snapshot, that snapshot is saved um, in your RDS AWS console for you to be able to restore to. The snapshots, the manual snapshots, also allow you to copy snapshots to different regions, copy and migrate, and restore into different regions. Let's continue. It's important to note that the backups are um, RDBMS agnostic. In other words, you're not, you, you can't expect a, a .bak file or a SQL file or a CSV file or some other database dump format. Um, you're only getting um, a point in time uh, instance level backup and restore ability. Um, if you wanted to extract data from your backup um, with uh, particular like with particular tools, um, you need to configure the tools to extract that data. So some examples of these tools would be like MySQL Dump, PHP MyAdmin, or SQL Server Management Studio, depending on your specific engine. So again, backups are RDBMS agnostic. You do not get any data level uh, backup. You would need third-party tools for that. Your recovery is only to a point in time in the instance retention period history. Another thing to, uh, to, uh, to note is that during the time of a backup, your DB may experience latency due to the fact that the snapshot is happening on your instance. So please schedule accordingly, schedule during maintenance windows that uh, are again, like I said, during uh, off hours. 
The RDS restore feature is, uh, it's important to note that it is used to scale in many cases. In other words, when you snapshot a database or when you restore a database from an automated backup, you have the choice to restore um, the particular backup to uh, a higher class, a more powerful database engine. So you can go, for example, from a T2 medium to an M3 large uh, when you restore. So people typically restore and scale. Okay. Another thing to note is that uh, when you restore an RDS backup, you will receive a new instance endpoint. In other words, you're going to receive a, a DNS, a new DNS connection string that you will have to update your application's connection strings. Okay, so be aware, be aware when you restore, you receive a new instance endpoint. Let's talk about multiple availability zone deployments and their purpose and how they work. In multi-AZ deployments, uh, the main objective is high availability and disaster recovery to basically create redundancy between um, data centers in a, in, a, in a given Amazon region. So for example, in this diagram, in our US East region, we have AZ1 and AZ2, each separate physical different locations, different data centers. And our primary database is in US East 1A, replicating to US East 1B. All of the replication and the heavy lifting is done automatically by Amazon, and it happens synchronously. In addition, the failover is also automatic. So that you do not, you as a DBA, you do not have to worry about failing over and changing anything in your application or your connection strings. You, your endpoint connection string remains the same <clears throat> even uh, in the event of a disaster and a failover. The other mechanism for replication is read replicas. And this is a little bit different than multi-AZ deployments where, like we said, the focus was on HA. Um, in this particular case with read replicas, the focus is on scaling and performance. The function of a read replica is only is read only, right? So you would point, for example, um, the application nodes uh, in your environment to the read-only connection string of the read replica in order to perform only read operations. Read and write operations would still need to go against your main endpoint, which would be a different DNS endpoint pointing to your primary database. Okay, so again, the function of a read replica is to have a copy, a read-only copy of the database um, for an application to uh, point for read-only operations. The replication or the read replicas um, have two, uh, as opposed to the multi-AZ, um, have uh, also cross-region replication. So you have both the same region um, um, option to do replication between the same uh, region with different availability zones or to replicate uh, across uh, a different region completely. So for example in this diagram we're doing um, a read replica in the same region and we're doing another read replica, second read replica, in a different region. Right, so in this case we have uh, US East, and in this case we have US West, and each read replica receives a different uh, connection string. Right, so for example, I call this RSS1 and RSS2. Back in the days, uh, this is how you would refer to uh, a database read-only replica. It would be called uh, RSSDB. The other thing to note is that read replicas are asynchronous as opposed to synchronous, like the multi-AZ replication. And again, as we mentioned, it adds a connection string to each read replica endpoint. And finally, the other thing to note about read replicas is that they can be promoted to primary. However, this will break your replication. 
Okay, so in the event of a disaster where you, for example, lost a complete region, you can take the secondary region and uh, the read replica in that region and promote it to your primary database. Okay. When you combine these two very powerful features, the multi-AZ and the read replicas, you can really achieve a high-performance HA environment um, as illustrated here in the diagram. So let's, let's quickly go over this diagram. In region 1, we have our primary and secondary databases using multi-AZ replication. Right, so we have one main read write endpoint read write connection string pointing to these two databases, and then we have two additional read replicas in two different regions. We have one in region two in US West, one read replica, and in the European uh, region, we have an additional. Um, uh, read replica, each with its own respective connection string. Right. So in, in this architecture, again, you're combining HA and high performance for both uh, scaling and redundancy. Thank you very much for watching. I look forward to seeing you in the next course.